Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're all having a wonderful morning. Do you know what time it is? It's time for Bible, Bible Journey. Journey! Yay! I'm so, so happy to see all of you again. Yesterday morning, do you remember the story we learned about? Who can tell me the story we learned about yesterday? Raise your hand. Okay, guys, I think everyone knows, so let's shout it out all at the same time. One, two, three. Cain and Abel! That's right. Yesterday, we learned about the first two brothers ever to be on the earth. Cain, the older brother, and Abel, the younger brother. It was a really fun story, right? Yes! Yeah. Now, today, we're going to go a little bit into the future, and we're going to talk about another really, really famous person in the Bible. But who could it be? I'll give you a hint. He led the Israelites out of Egypt. He held up his staff, and he split the Red Sea. He has a really, really long beard. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Moses. Do you guys know the story about Moses? Let me hear you. One, two, three. Yes! Yeah, we're going to talk about Moses today. Now, after Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, it was a very long journey. They were going through the wilderness, and they were going to the promised land that God promised to give Moses and the Israelites, the land of Canaan. But along the way, a lot of interesting things happened. So today's story is not going to be about the Red Sea. It's not going to be about the ten plagues. It's going to be about Moses and the bronze serpent. <gasps> the bronze what? The bronze serpent. Everyone, do you know what a serpent is? It's like a snake. It slithers around, and it hisses, and it bites. Oh, it's really scary, right? But in today's story, we're going to see the fiery serpents and the bronze serpents. So, don't be too scared, though, because this story has a happy ending. So, should we start from the beginning? Yeah. Are you ready to go on a journey? Okay, then let's go. So, it all starts thousands and thousands years of, go, of years ago after Moses was leading the Israelites in the land of Canaan. Now, there were all sorts of Israelites at the time. There were strong Israelites who were good at fighting. There were smart Israelites who were good at studying. And there were fast Israelites who were good at running. There were all sorts of people. Hmm, but I think it's not fun if I just tell you about it. How about we meet some of those Israelites right now? Hey guys, I see one coming right now. Boys and girls, meet John. John is the most powerful, the fastest, the quickest, and the strongest boxer and Taekwondo master to ever inhabit the camp of Israel. Ever since he was young, Every morning, John would wake up and do 1,000 jumping jacks, 1,000 squats. Everyone, he's going kind of slow, right? I think he needs to speed up. Let's try again. 1,000 jumping jacks, 1,000 squats, 1,000 push-ups, 1,000 sit-ups. And then he would do it all over again, but he would go even faster this time. 1,000 jumping jacks, 1,000 squats. Oh, he wants to do push-ups. We have to start again. 1,000 jumping jacks. 1,000 squats, 1,000 push-ups, 1,000 sit-ups, and this would all be before he even ate his Fruit Loops. But you know, John was such a good fighter, he wouldn't even break a sweat. And whenever he wanted to test his strength, he would have an arm wrestling contest with the other Israelites in the camp. And he would only use his pinky. Ready, go! Like it's nothing. They would come one by one, and it would be like a knife cutting through butter. Not a problem at all. Now, John had a dream one day of being the best Taekwondo fighter in the world. 
There is no one who could ever defeat John in anything he did. And believe me, they tried. Sometimes they would come and challenge John. Hey, give me your lunch money. Come on. But John would fight them with one hand behind his back. There was no one who could go against him. Wow, everyone. John really is a good fighter, right? Wow, let's give a round of applause for John. Hey man, I'm the strongest one here. My muscles will help me fight any problem. Wow, but you know everyone, John wasn't the only Israelite in the camp of Israel. There were over 600,000 men alone. I think there's another one coming. And this guy looks pretty smart. Oh, everyone, let's say hi to Dr. Justin. Hi, Dr. Justin. Yay! Wow, doesn't he look so smart with his thick glasses? His glasses look even smarter than my glasses. Where did you get those lens crafters? Wow, so Dr. Justin studied in the most prestigious, the best university in the world, Harvard University. Every morning, he'd wake up early in the morning when the sun was just coming up and he'd crack open the textbooks and he would read 1,000 pages like it was nothing. And then he would take 1,000 pages of notes because he has to succeed in the exam. Then he would take a 10 second nap because he has to recover. Then he'd do it all over again. 1,000 pages of studying, 1,000 pages of notes. Everyone, Justin had a dream. That dream was to come up with the most effective, the most powerful, the most wonderful, amazing medicine you've ever seen. A medicine that could heal any sickness or any disease. And believe me, people came to Justin from all over the camp. Doc, doc, he's dying. What are we gonna do, Dr. Justin? Ha! No problem. Just take two of these, and you'll be fine in the morning. Oh, thank God. Is it really gonna work? <gasps> He's okay, everyone. Thanks, Doc. But it wasn't a miracle. It was all thanks to the brains and the hard work of Dr. Justin. Do you have any disease? Come to me. I can heal any sickness. Wow, everyone. Let's give a big round of applause for Dr. Justin. Wait a second, what's that I hear? Is that a bird? Is that a plane? It's Tim Shim, the speeding bullet. Hey. Wow, everyone in the camp of Israel, there were a lot of fast, amazing people, but no one was as flexible. Oh yeah. No one was as fast. No one was as handsome as Tim Shim, the speeding bullet. You know, Tim Shim had the dream to be the world's fastest long distance runner. And many people tried to challenge him in different races. But you know what? No matter what, Tim Shim always came out on top. On your marks, get set, go! While the other runners were just on their first lap, Tim Shim would already be running 100 miles without even breaking a sweat. And the winner is... Tim Shim! <sighs> Many people tried, but no one could defeat the speeding bullet. He would run so fast that his shoes would burn right off his feet. <gasps> wow, someone get him an endorsement from Nike. Anyways, Tim Shim, like I said, dreamed of being the fastest person in the world. No one could keep up to him, and really he was an amazing guy. Let's hear what Tim has to say about himself. I can run faster than anything with two, four, or ten legs. Nothing can beat me. I'm the fastest guy out here. Wow, everyone. Let's give a round of applause for Tim Shin. <laughs> so as you can see, there were so many amazing people in the camp of Israel. There were strong people who liked to exercise and who liked to fight. There were smart people who would flip through the books and who would study and who would get good scores on all their tests. And there were fast people, 
People who were faster, who ran further, and who stood out from everyone else because they were the elite. Everyone people like John and Justin and Tim were just a small part of the camp of Israel. Now, all the people in the camp of Israel were on a journey. Do you remember where I said they were going? They were going to the Promised Land. And who were they following again? Raise your hand if you know who they were following. Who was leading the people of Israel? You. That's right. They were following Moses. I think I see Moses and the Israelites coming right now. But along the way, the people of Israel started to have complaints. <gasps> I think John has a complaint to share right now. Come on, man. What is this place? There's no gym. There's no weights. I have no protein to bulk up. I can't live here. Oh, man. <gasps> Even Dr. Justin has something to complain about. Where are the libraries? The pharmacies? How do people get their medicine? Oh, that sounds pretty bad. How about Timothy, the speeding bullet? There's a track here, okay? And I'm a marathon runner. I need to get my medals. Also, I need water. If I want to win, I got to stay hydrated. Wow, everyone. So no food, no water, no facilities, nowhere to stay. It's burning hot. One by one, the people of Israel began to complain, and their complaints went up all the way to God's ears. Moses tried to calm them down, but it was no use. Hey guys, why are you guys complaining? Remember what we're doing. We're going to the promised land. God is leading us. With all these complaints, God had no choice but to send down from heaven the fiery serpents. When God sent the fiery serpents, they were everywhere. In every corner, in every nook, in any cranny, anywhere you looked, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Israelites would wake up in the morning, they would go to the toilet, they would open up the toilet, <gasps> there'd be a fiery serpent in the toilet. They would open up their Cheerios, pour it into the bowl, and what would come out? A fiery serpent in their Cheerios. There were fiery serpents everywhere. They would bite onto you, they would bite you, and they would hiss, and they would scream, and it hurt so much, but there was nothing the Israelites could do. Not even the world's best boxer or fighter like John. John, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna fight them, I'm gonna beat them up like I usually do. But no matter how much John would fight, another one would jump on, another one would bite, and he started to lose his strength. Oh no, is he gonna make it? Even people like John couldn't defeat the fiery serpents. If fighters like John couldn't do anything about the fiery serpents, then maybe someone really smart and someone who knows medicine like Dr. Justin. Here he comes right now. Dr. Justin, surely you can do something about the fiery serpents. Coughing, runny nose, fever. If I just inject this. But no matter how much medicine he would use, they would keep coming. And the medicine had no effect. If Dr. Justin is dying, we're all in trouble. Boys and girls, this is such a serious situation. Fiery serpents here, fiery serpents there. Our strongest guy, our smartest guy couldn't do anything, but there's still hope. What about Tim Shim, the speeding bullet? Here he comes, running as fast as ever. I gotta run these guys. But no matter how fast he ran, they would always stay on. Tim, there's one on your butt. <laughs> Truly, the complaints of the people went all the way up to the ears of God, and God sent the fiery serpents. There was nothing that they could do until God spoke to Moses. And God told Moses to build something called the bronze serpent. He told him to take bronze, 
to make it into the shape of a serpent and to put it onto a pole. So that way, anyone who looks at it would not die, but would live. Here comes Moses and the Israelites right now. Moses, it looks like they're in a lot of pain. What can we do? Everyone, I prayed to God and He told me to make a bronze serpent. If you just look at this, you will live. Man, stop playing. I'll fight these every day. Nothing is that simple. You need mirrors of research and calculation in order to get rid of this. One by one, as they fought the fiery serpents, the people who didn't look at the bronze serpent started to die. Hey guys, but let me tell you once again, God said if you just look at this, you'll live. I can't do anything. I can't run. Maybe I should just believe him. Oh my God. I'm here. <laughs> like this, those who just believed the Word of God and listened to what Moses said, even though the serpents were still biting them, but they looked. And when they looked at the bronze serpent, did they die, everyone, or did they live? That's right. They didn't die, but they lived. Exactly as the Word of God said. Okay, everyone, now let's give a big round of applause for all of our actors. So don't worry, they didn't die in real life, okay? It was just for the story. Now, everyone, I want to talk to you about what this story means. Let's think about it. No matter how much John or Justin or Tim tried to fight against the fiery serpents, were they able to win? No, it was an impossible fight from the beginning. There were countless, countless serpents everywhere they looked. And even if you were strong, even if you were smart, even if you were fast, it didn't make a difference. You guys, do you know what the fiery serpents represent? I'll give you a second to think about it. All right, have you thought about it? Who knows the answer? Raise your hands. Okay, how about you? All right, these fiery serpents represent sin. <gasps> That's right, everyone. They represent sin. Let's think about it, okay? No matter how much they tried to fight the fiery serpents, they weren't able to overcome them or defeat them. But us too, no matter how much we try to defeat sin, to overcome sin, to stop sinning, we're not able to. And everyone, if you remember, I'm going to ask you a question. What happened to the people who got bit by the fiery serpents and who didn't look at the bronze serpent? What happened to them? Can you tell me the answer? One, two, three. They died. That's right, they died. But everyone, you know what? It's the same thing with sin. If we have sin in our hearts, and then we die, then we have to pay the price of those sins. And what is the price of sin? Does anyone know? Can you raise your hands if you know? What's the price of sin? Yes, everyone, it is death. And it's not just death, but it's going to hell and being separated from God. <gasps> Does anyone want to go to hell and be separate from God? No. no, I know I don't, and I know you don't too. But what can we do about the problem of sin? Even the strongest fighter, no matter how much he punched, how much he kicked, how much he blocked, it didn't do anything against the fiery serpents. How about the smartest person? No matter how much he researched, no matter how much he studied, no matter what medicine or shots he tried, it didn't matter. The fastest person too, no matter how fast he ran, everywhere he went, the serpents were waiting for him. I'm going to call out one of our actors one more time. Now, let's see. John, can you grab some of those serpents we used earlier and can you come out for me real quick? Try to grab a bunch, okay? Did you get a bunch? All right, so 
our fighter, John, is going to come back out and join us one more time. Now, everyone, let's make an example, okay? Let's say that John decided in his heart, I'm really, really not going to sin. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to be jealous. I'm going to honor my mother and father. I'm not going to hate. And he decided in his heart. But then one day, his mom and dad says, Hey, John, clean your room. And then John says, I don't want to clean my room. You clean my room. You're stupid. Uh-oh. He didn't honor his mother and father. He broke the law. And then what if one day while he's at school, he sees a kid who has a brand new Xbox One, the best game system ever. And then in his heart, do you know what he thinks? Hmm, I wish I had one of those too. Hmm, maybe when he's not looking, I should take it. <gasps> he just coveted his friend's Xbox One. Everyone, no matter how much John may try not to sin, it doesn't matter. One by one, the sins in his heart appear and manifest, just like the fiery serpents. And he can say, I'm not going to sin. I'm going to block them all. I'm going to fight him. But the next day, they come back and back and back. You know, fighting with sin and fighting the fiery serpents is just like trying to cross the Pacific Ocean. Kids, let me ask you a question. Raise your hand if you like to swim. Raise your hand. Okay, do you like swimming in the pool or do you like swimming in the ocean? You guys can shout out the answer. One, two, three. Pool! Oh, everyone likes swimming in the pool. Do you know why? Because, you know, actually the pool, it's much closer and it's much safer too. The pool is not a huge wide open ocean. It has four walls. There's always people to watch you. There's no waves. The water's not <coughs> salty and nasty. There's no dangerous sharks or whales to eat you either. But can you imagine if someone like John, the world's strongest boxer and fighter, tried to swim across the Pacific Ocean? <gasps> Raise your hand if you think he could make it all the way without resting even one time. Nobody? John, let me ask you a question. Do you think that you would be able to swim across the Pacific Ocean without resting, without getting in a boat, without drinking any water or eating any food? No. Exactly. So. Everyone, it doesn't matter how strong he is, even like Dr. Justin, it doesn't matter how smart you are. Even like Tim, it doesn't matter how fast you are. There are certain things that man and human beings cannot defeat, that we cannot overcome. And what is the biggest one out of all of them? We just talked about it a second ago. I'll give you a clue. It starts with three letters. The first sound is S and the last sound is IN. What could the word be? That's right, SIN. We can't do anything about sin. Now let's imagine that John started swimming across the Pacific Ocean. Swim, 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 swim. But then he started to get tired. And then he started to go under the water. Oh no, he's drowning! What does he need, everyone, if he wants to live? The harder he swims, the harder he moves his arms, he's going to get more tired and eventually he's going to die. John, if you're in this kind of situation, what are you going to do? Uh, you're going to shout for? Help. Okay. He's going to shout for help, right? Yes. And then when he shouts for help, what's going to happen? Someone's going to come and they're going to pull him out of the water. Why? Because he can't do it himself. Everyone, this is also just like the bronze serpent. People could not fight the fiery serpents no matter how much they tried. So God told Moses, make a bronze serpent. Oh, Moses is still here, everyone. How about he comes out one more time? Let's see, there's Moses with the bronze serpent again. So God told Moses, and Moses can stand here in the middle, to make a bronze serpent and to put it on a pole. Okay, everyone. Now let's see if you remember, okay? God said, Whenever you look at the bronze serpent on the pole, what would happen? Would you live 
or would you die? I want everyone to answer out loud, okay? One, two, three. Live! That's right. Whoever looks at the bronze serpent, they would live. It doesn't matter if you have 100 fiery serpents on you. It doesn't matter if you have 1,000. Remember Tim? He even had one on his butt, right? That must have hurt. It didn't matter. As long as they looked at the bronze serpent, they would live. So, who is really the smart person? The person who keeps fighting until the end? Or the person who quickly realizes that they can't fight and they look at the bronze serpent? That's right the one who looks at the bronze serpent. Now everyone, we're going to look at our Bibles really quick, okay? So do you have your Bibles? I want everyone to open up their Bibles. Today we're going to look at Numbers chapter 21. Let's open to Numbers 21. Okay, now if you found it, I'm going to read just one verse, okay? I'm going to make one verse it's going to be Numbers chapter 21, verse 8. Did everyone find it? Raise your hands if you found it so I know that we're all ready. Okay, good. So, I'm going to read verse 8, and I want you guys to also read it at home. Here we go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, any man, when he behold the serpent, when he looketh, shall live. Everyone, what did it say will happen when they look at the serpent made out of brass? They will live. Now, this is the really important question. What does the bronze serpent on the pole represent? Who knows the answer? If you know the answer, raise your hand. Okay. Let's see who knows the answer. All right, I think everyone knows the answer, so you can say it all at the same time, okay? One, two, three. Jesus! That's right, everyone. The bronze serpent represents Jesus. We could not do anything to defeat our sins. No matter how much we tried, we always kept sinning. But God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to wash away all of our sins once and for all. Everyone, this is the meaning of the bronze serpent. So, when people are suffering inside of their sins, when they are worried that they're going to die and go to hell, actually, when they look at the cross, what can they remember? Oh yeah, that's the place where Jesus died on the cross for my sins. With His blood, He washed my sins away. It's just like how the people, when they were being bitten by the fiery serpents, they looked at the bronze serpent. And what did they realize? God said, if I look at this, I will live. These fiery serpents can't do anything to me anymore. Everyone, it's such a thankful and amazing thing. Now everyone, the really important thing is, who are you going to be? Are you going to be like John? and Justin, who until the end, they kept fighting and trying to defeat the fiery serpents on their own, through their own effort, through their hard work, through their determination. Did that work, everyone? No, they ended up dying. Or are you going to be like Tim, who realized, oh, no matter how much I run, no matter how much I try, I can't do anything. I have to give up and I have to look at the bronze serpent. When he looked at the bronze serpent, everyone, he lived. Everyone, this is what the gospel is. This is what Jesus did for us. Yes, we have many, many sins that we committed, many, many sins. We cannot defeat it. We cannot take care of it. But what do we have to do, everyone? We only have to look at the cross. When we see the cross, we remember, Oh, that's where Jesus washed all of my sins with His blood. He has made me clean. My sins are washed, and now sin has no more power to condemn me. No more power to send me to hell. I can go to heaven because Jesus died on that cross for my sins. But everyone, is it really that easy? 
Shouldn't we have to do something? It seems too easy, right guys? Yeah, it seems very easy. But everyone, let's remember yesterday when we talked about Cain and Abel. Cain worked very hard. He thought that God would be pleased with his hard work of making the best fruits and the best vegetables. But let me ask you everyone, and you can answer out loud. Did God accept Cain's offering? Yes or no? One, two, three. No! No, God was not pleased with Cain's hard work or effort. Rather, God was pleased with Abel's offering. Abel realized he couldn't give anything good to God, so he gave the lamb. And what did the lamb represent, everyone? Do you remember? If you remember, I want you to say it, okay? One, two, three. Jesus! That's right. The lamb represented Jesus. God is happy when we rely on Jesus because Jesus is the one who washed our sins away. Jesus is the one who defeated sin, just like the brown serpent was the only thing that could save the Israelites from the fiery serpents. Everyone, thank you guys. I want to let you guys go in now, okay? Everyone, there's one more thing I want to tell you, okay? Do you think that God only defeated your sins and that's it? No, I have good news for you. God took care of every single problem, every single difficulty, and every single bad thing that you're afraid of when Jesus died on the cross. Okay, everyone, if you have your Bibles, we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 53. Okay, let's open Isaiah 53. And we're going to look at verse 6. Isaiah is right in the middle of the Bible, okay? All right, did you find it? Okay, I'm going to give you one more second. All right, so if you found it, I'm going to read Isaiah 53, verse 6. Here we go. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay, everyone, we just read one verse. You know, the first part of this verse says that we are all like sheep. <gasps> what? We're like sheep? Who's a sheep? I don't have wool and I don't have four legs. I'm a person. What are you talking about, Mr. Glenn? Well, everyone, the Bible is comparing us to sheep because sheep sometimes, they go on a different path, different from the shepherd. Do you remember the cute little sheep we saw yesterday in the story of Abel? He was really cute, right? Yeah. Sometimes us too. What it means is we sin, we go against God, and we are very far apart from God many times. That is who we are. Just like the people bitten by all the fiery serpents all over their body, we are people who had sin. And it says, the Lord laid our sins on Jesus Christ. And He didn't just lay our sins on Jesus, but all of our problems, all of our fears, all of our difficulties, all of those things went to who? They went to Jesus Christ. So everyone, are the problems still on you? No, the problems have been moved to Jesus. Are your sins still on you? No, your sins have been moved to Jesus. So, does sin have any more power over you? No, everyone, the fiery serpents could not kill anyone who looked at the bronze serpent. Also, us too, everyone, let's not try to fight the bronze serpents. Let's not try to fight sin, to try to be good people who serve God through our own determination or will. Let's give up like Tim. Oh, I can't do it. I need to look at the bronze serpent. I need to look at Jesus. And when we see Jesus, everyone, we'll realize Jesus has already taken my sins. Where? Everyone, where did God take away our sins? If you know the answer, raise your hand. Okay, I think everyone knows, so we're going to say it all together. One, two, three. On the cross! That's right, everyone. Jesus died for all of our sins on the cross. Now sin has no more power over us. Sin cannot condemn us or send us to hell. So everyone, what I want you to remember today is, don't try to fight with sin, to try to wash your sins on your own, to try to be a good person by yourself. Justin tried, John tried, but in the end, they couldn't defeat the fiery serpents. But Tim, 
He realized he couldn't do it, and then he looked to the bronze serpent. What happened, everyone? He lived. Let us also rely only on Jesus Christ. Let us look at the cross, and let us believe in Jesus, who has washed our sins away, who has borne all of our problems and difficulties on himself. Then I believe we'll truly be blessed and happy in our lives. Okay, everyone. Wow, it's been such a great class today learning about the bronze serpent with all of you. Did you have fun? Yes! Great, me too. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow while we'll learn another story during the Bible journey. All right, everyone. Goodbye!